right, all right, all right. Greetings, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to All Things Division Three Soccer with Simple Coach and Jackie. There is Jackie, ever vigilant, and I am Simple Coach. So today uh, is a redo of a interview I had with Coach Jamie Gunderson of the 2021 Women's National Champions, Christopher Newport University. The first interview was fantastic. He was gracious, great, great conversation all the way around. Lo and behold, um, you, you know, because I'm a growing multimedia empire, uh, had some glitches, some tech technical issues. And the interview, I just, we pulled, we both agreed to pull. And, um, and lo and behold, he was, again, gracious enough to, to do a second interview. And it came out much better. So I'm, as I've said all along, I'm learning this um, and do appreciate the support that I am receiving from folks like Coach Gunderson. I think you'll find this interview to be, again, fantastic, great insight into the program, into some of the players, and yeah, I, I think that it's going to be well worth your time. So thanks again. Hope you enjoy. Stay tuned because there's going to be more interviews. Uh, I'm actually going to try to see if I can get a couple of players uh, to, to speak to. So it's an ever-evolving uh, plan, like I said, as my multimedia global empire takes over. So, okay, thanks. Enjoy the interview. Uh, Coach Gunderson, thanks for joining me. We uh, The technical issues abound. Uh, do appreciate you taking the time to, to meet with me uh, a second time. Yeah, I appreciate this. And again, you know, happy to help. And you know, I like what you're doing and your idea. And so, you know, let's, let's make it good. Thank you. So it, the, the, um, this actually is a, a, you know, a silver lining into having to do this twice. Um, I, I, I ordered one and it didn't come in time for our first time we tried this interview, but I officially got my There you go. CNU fan hat. So I'm ready to roll. Looks good. Um, Looks good. Yeah, it feels good. You know? There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, all right. So, you know, why don't we why don't we just kick off? Could you just sort of talk about, you know, how you got to the spot you're in now and and sort of some of the folks you met along the way and have helped you look achieve you know, yeah. it's great things, obviously. Yeah, yeah, the the journey, it's it's been a journey for sure. Um, so I'm from, born and raised in Newport News, um, where Christopher Newport is located. Um, when I graduated high school from Denby High School, I went to Methodist University down in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Played there for four years, um, ended up getting a, an accounting degree. And then after I graduated, um, ended up coming back home, got an accounting job with Portsmouth Redevelopment and Housing Authority. Um, however, you know, I love, love the game. So I always wanted to still kind of continue my involvement and to help grow the game. So the local soccer club, Virginia Legacy, was still in the area. And Steve Shaw and Justin Chesham, who both worked on the men's side at CNU, um, kind of were doing uh, kind of a sister program or a partnership program in Newport News. So got in touch with them and, you know, Steve Shaw and J Justin Chesham or Cheese, as we call them, got me involved with like a U10 team. So started kind of coaching just at the club level there, still having my accounting job. And then um, on top of that, my sister, Danny Gunderson, who's now the head coach at Muskingum University. Yeah. OAC, uh, right? Yeah, I played they, against them. So, there you go. Yeah. Um, she was a senior at CNU and played uh, under Ruth Keegan at the time, was the head coach. Um, well, Ruth got in touch with me because she knew I'd be around the area, asked if I would kind of just volunteer kind of during games. And I said, sure, I'll come sit on the sideline, give you my two cents. You know, I don't, 
don't see the girls in training or the players in training day in and day out. So uh, I did that, and you know it was great. And just being around the game still, and being able to, you know, have my accounting job and everything was great. Well, then the next following year, Ruth steps away. Dan Weiler, um, who comes from Minnesota, gets the head job. Don't know Dan. He doesn't know me. However, got in touch with Steve and Cheese, and they had talked about me that I helped previously. And so Dan and I got in communication, and he asked if I wanted to help out again, um, but take more on a kind of a part-time role, so be more involved in trainings and things like that. And I said, sure. So then did that for a year. The next year after that, so Dan's second year, the full-time coaching job, opened up at CNU and so getting to know me getting to know Dan you know it, it kind of seemingly was working out really well where we you know worked well together um and so I had to make a decision do I kind of take this opportunity or do I stick with my accounting job and kind of just do the part-time thing again um I'm a big believer in things happen for a reason it's opportunities present themselves for a reason uh so I said okay well step away from accounting coaching is what is what's in store for me now so took the full-time job was with the program under dan for eight years um and you know had great success learned a ton from dan and then dan ended up getting the head job at johns hopkins where he is now so then i'm kind of in the predicament of you know applying for the head job at cnu and go through the process and very fortunate enough to get the job and then here we are. So kind of, kind of, not, it's kind of a wacky journey, I think, compared to most people where they knew they wanted to get into collegiate coaching yeah. where, you know, it wasn't on my radar and then it became on my radar kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, it's just funny how things work out. I'm sure you could always go back to accounting. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. For sure. That, yeah. that was my mindset. It's like accounting is going to be accounting. Yeah. So be there. Got a couple years under my belt. So have that too just in case things don't pan out yeah. so hopefully you know i don't have to go to accounting again yeah <laughs> I, I, would, I would hope so too somebody who was in sort of financial world yeah i don't even want to go back so um what of those folks that you talked about those different coaches is there anyone in particular who had a had a real influence and impact on your coaching your coaching style and sort of what how you approach to managing a team yeah uh, dan dan wilder number one i mean he didn't know me, you know, took a chance on me and really kind of molded me in a sense of running a competitive and successful environment at the collegiate level. Um, so definitely he had a big impact on my kind of coaching style or kind of where we're going now mm -hmm. in my career. Um, you know, I think one of my youth coaches growing up, Dave Gentry, uh he just instilled the love of the game in me and just, mm -hmm. you know, I was a seven-year-old when I started, so playing up a couple of age groups and stuff like that. So just and then he was my club coach basically my entire till I was eighteen yeah. till I went to college. So I just having that kind of foundation and just love for the game through him really just carries a lot with me. And then um, Steve and Justin Chesney choose again. I mean, those guys took another chance on me coming back and yeah. offering me kind of a club position. And again, just learning from, you know, Dan, Steve and Cheese, who have like combined over 50 plus years of coaching at the mm -hmm. collegiate level and tons of success. So just learning from them just really have, you know, helped me get to where I am now for sure. Mm -hmm. So just to give you a heads up, I am probably going to reach out to your sister and to Dan. Yeah. And then I'm going to do another interview set of interviews with them. Um, just so that we could talk about you and 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 there, come up. There. there you go. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> that'll that'll you know skyrocket this channel. <laughs> um, so let, let's shift over to. I'm a big culture guy and think culture is really important. And so, uh, it, just from an overall game perspective, do you are you one of those coaches that spends a a heavy emphasis on who you're playing or do you spend most of your time on your team and how you intend to play and what you want to do 
Yeah, it's a little bit of both for us. Um, you know, I think we've established ourselves as, you know, the top 10 team or top 15 team year in and year out. So just establishing and getting to that point now, we can, you know, really focus on ourselves and just really in, in like, um, like, in, gosh, what's the word? Just basically in, enforce ourselves on the other team to adjust to mm-hmm. what we're doing. Um and while still, again, have the respect for other teams and breaking them down and watching film on them, figuring out who their key players are, how they attack, how they defend, set pieces, things like that. Um, that's a big kind of component to how we operate here is that, you know, each each match against whoever we're playing, we have a film session about that, that team we're playing mm-hmm. and how we want to do it. And then the pregame practices kind of go through some scenarios and things like that with the girls or with the team and um, not changing a lot on our end, just maybe some small tweaking things, maybe how to maybe force to one side a bit more if they're attacking just to keep it away from maybe one of the best players on the other side Mm -hmm. kind of thing. But we want to really impose ourselves on the other team and, you know, just really keep a high level of attack and being really stingy on the defensive side of things. Yeah. It helps when you have a player like Riley Cook um, it does, it does. to be able to imp- impose yourself, right? Um, it, I guess this goes this goes back to the culture part. Like, what are you know? What are some things that you you, you tell your teams preseason that might uh, you know are are hard coded? They're non negotiable things that you expect from your players and from your leaders on the team and from you know the team in general yeah um hard work number one is showing up and you know giving everything you can give on that day um no matter what the kind of situation you're in with you know other stressful stresses that are coming into your life at that moment um so hard work again showing up because that's something you can control um and that's kind of how I talk to them is like control what you can control. And Mm -hmm. that again is an area you can. Um, And then another big component that we really talk about is being good people, being, you know, good teammates, respectful, understanding, supportive, and just really, and just having that, that foundation of that. Those are kind of the highest two non-negotiables we have. There's Mm -hmm. other details, you know, we spend in preseason going through, you know, just team culture, activities and just going through things but those two kind of probably carry the most weight Mm -hmm. with me for sure Mm -hmm. and and now i i gotta believe right you you, you've you've won it all i mean the accolades for your team are you know i mean you you literally have won it all i think right (laughs) like your team you know um uh yeah, like academically, your yep. the nice team award or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, right? the team eth- ethics award. Yep. Ethics, that's it. Yep, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I should say ethics because that sounds better than nice, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you, what are some of your early expectations going in? I, I, I get your way out, but like any early expectations for, for next year? Right? Yeah, I mean, I think we have an even bigger target on our back now. So, you know, I've been telling the girls, like, you know, it's it's hard work to get to the top, but it's even harder to stay there. So, you know, all this work we put in with, you know, not having a season during COVID, and we were, you know, being creative as much as we could with the limitations that were presented. And so we didn't play any games. Um, we had a couple scrimmages, but that's about it. Uh, but some trainings were just – fitness days some trainings were just technical side where you can't have contact or anything like that so all that work that was put in that year i definitely carried over into this season now how do we do it again so you know are you are we willing to put in that work and get us to a spot where we can potentially have another run at it um and i think we have the team that could do that. They have a good mindset. We had individual meetings after, you know, we got back to school with them and they want more, you know, they were, they're not satisfied. And and that's something I think we've been working towards as like over the years when Dan was here with myself, like 
We want to establish a culture where we can win it more than one time every mm -hmm. once in a while. And this group that we have going forward, you know, we lose Riley and Haley, two fifth years, and then four seniors who had the experience of the 2018 Final Four. Um, that is a lot. Like they did a great job leading and mentoring the younger girls, but going forward, they've instilled in the team what it really takes mm -hmm. to get there. And I think we're in a really good place there. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, do you have any concerns rolling into from, from your standpoint going into next year? I mean, obviously we'll talk about players and whatnot, but, but more in terms of you're on top of the mountain and no one else. <laughs> This yeah, is good and all that stuff. I mean, it, it's it's kind of what I just hit on. It, it's it's in the girls' hands right, or the team's hands right now, where you know at D three level we can't have contact with them until our spring yeah. season. So there's a good chunk of time that they kind of have to a little bit be on their own, and we'll see. And I and I think we do have the team that is willing to put in the wood. Um, so don't have a ton of concerns because I think we have a good a good culture and understanding that, you know, it's great to win, win it mm -hmm. all. But again, the number of uh, players that said they want to continue to win more mm -hmm. was just was, there were a lot. And it, it, yeah. that really, you know, touches me. And because, again, that's what we want as a staff to. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so now shifting to this past season, but you know it's it's early days of August. You haven't you didn't really have a season the year before, so there's probably a lot of unknowns there. It it's it is it becomes your first your your first real full season, right, as head coach? Yeah. 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 I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, you scripted this. I'm convinced. Like somebody, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, you, you, you know, what were what were what did you think your 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 team was capable of doing? Yeah, I mean, again, I can hit on it a little bit in another question, mm -hmm. but the leadership that was provided, um, you know, Riley definitely and Haley, the two fifth years sticking around, um, and then the four seniors. Uh, that, again, went to the 2018 Final Four. So we had six girls that had been to a Final Four before. <clears throat> so just their leadership and the experience that they, you know, gained uh, just really helped. And I knew going into the season we could – we had a team where we could make a run. Um, and we'll see where we stack up, how the tournament plays out, who we face up, matchups, things like that. And, you know, for, for as a staff, we take game, a game by game. Mm -hmm. And whoever we're playing, you know, we're doing the, the, the work behind the scenes, scouting them, film sessions, um, breaking down how we can really improve our system um, so when we do play these teams, we're ready to go. And, again, I just felt like we had a good makeup uh, mm -hmm. what it looked like and I think the not having the season really made the team e even hungrier and just mm -hmm. wanting it more because we hadn't played a yeah, real yeah. game in a whole year and you know that's strange to think about but uh, I think it fueled them and just a little, little fire under them too coming into mm -hmm. the preseason. All right, so I joked earlier about, you know, it's easy to impose yourself when you have someone like Riley Cook. So, you know, it just if you could just elaborate how how important she was or not just to this season, but overall to your program, right? I mean, yeah. someone like that probably has the personality on the field and would think off the field too. Yeah, I mean, she did she had a, you know, great career with us. Um she I think 90 goals in 86 games in her career so averaging over a goal per game is uh unheard of and but that's it's kind of the behind the scenes things that she does as well as on the field she's a she's a great person and um like this past fall she would go do 
workouts with a teammate that needed help in the fitness area before mm-hmm. training, like every day, and and then show up to training and give it her all. And that's just the kind of person she is, and you know, mm-hmm. just willing to help and do whatever it kind of takes mentality. And now, you know, there's other, I would say, influential uh, players through the program that have gotten us to where we are. Um, I wouldn't just say her, but she's definitely paved the path for mm-hmm. the success of this program um, because I, it definitely takes more than one kind of person to really. I wouldn't say we needed to revamp the program when Dan and I took over, but mm-hmm. we had different expectations. And, you know, the players, again, to get us to where we are, the alumni, I did, they put in a ton, a ton of work and just mm-hmm. give them all the credit there too. But, yeah. again, just circling back to Riley, I mean, she's unbelievable. and She's such a, a good, caring person. Like now she's going to go to nursing school. Because she she loves helping people, and that's yeah. a perfect perfect fit for her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, just can't speak more highly of her. Mm-hmm. Um. So I, I have a question here. All of your accolades, but I don't expect you to answer it. But your national champs, team ethics and sportsmanship award, the nice award as I called it, coaching <laughs> staff of the year, player you had player of the year, two all Americans, five all region players. I, I, I'm not sure. And I, and you probably, I mean, conference and all that, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, just remarkable. So, um, all right. On the other side of the ball and someone who I'm really interested in because I've in the final in particular, and, and, and I think I went back and I probably watched five or six of your games where I could video is still a little yeah. difficult to come by at times. Um, is uh Haley Iser your goalkeeper? Yeah. Um I mean her her stats alone, like if you if you didn't even watch her and you just looked at her stats in comparison to others, you would just feel she must be fantastic. So um you you have uh Riley up top and now you have Haley who are both presences on the field and they're graduating and I just I'm I'm curious how do you especially on the defensive side how do you you know how do you replace somebody like that Yeah I mean it's going to be hard for sure um but I mean that's kind of our jobs as coaches is to you know develop and you know recruit um players that can fill these roles um it's really going to be I mean both those two just had phenomenal careers so they're going to be big holes to fill, but um, again, that comes with our coaching staff and how, 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 like, who we've developed and what this looks like and going forward. Um, I was really happy you you hit on it with Haley's stats and things like that. Uh, I was, yeah, it's it's unreal, and I was really happy she finally, at the end of the season, did get some recognition. Um, you know, being named the best goalkeeper at the Final Four, yeah. um, be, be, being a D3 All-American, yep. D3 Soccer All-American. So th- that was huge because, you know, it was tough for her because our back line was so strong. So this good, year. yeah. Uh, and, you know, they, people would make arguments, well, she didn't have to face that many shots. My argument against that is that when she did face the shot, she's still making the Nothing save. went through. So, <laughs> right. So it's, you can go either way. I get it. But um, I was really happy for her because she was, she was definitely a big help to our success this, this season. And same, same with Riley too. As a, as a former goalkeeper, I know, and having been on teams where uh, the defensive the, the defenders in front do a lot of work to stop any action. It's easy to get overlooked. So, but like I said, regardless, even watching those games, I, it, it's not like she stood there and you know watched <laughs> the grass grow. Like I don't know what else to see, you know. Yeah, it's, no, it, it's, I was, it's, yeah, I know. I, I'm just again couldn't be more proud yeah. of you know 
those two, and then again the senior group that were, was with them, and some of mm-hmm. some of the seniors didn't play as much, but you know they're just as important to the team as For those sure. two that get the minutes and you know yeah. all, all the shine on the field kind of thing. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, so I have to I have to ask you because this to me is always the there's always a point in the season where you you sort of make a decision or you sort of come to the conclusion. This is at this point, I, I know we're going to be national champions or I know like we are just forget it. Like the season's over. Not that it's ever over, but yeah. you just kind of like, OK, we're just going to play games. Um, it, it was anything like that in your uh, this season for you? Yeah, kind of kind of two two games. Uh, one was against Roanoke um, kind of early on in the season. Uh, we got hit with COVID a little bit, so we had a couple starters not play and some players that come off the bench as well. So it was it was great to see how we responded to that as a team. Um, and after that match, I was like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're, we we got a good group here, and you know if we can you know play without a couple starters, a couple key bench players coming in yeah. and still win the match um, and still dominate, I think, because uh, Roanoke's a good side, too. So yeah. um, I was like, okay, well, we got we got a good foundation. Then uh, another game was Lynchburg, which was at the very end of the season, Yeah, where, again, they had been, you know, winning a ton of games, really starting to get some looks in the top 25. So key kind of match up toward the very end of the season, right before playoffs. And, you know, we play great that game and we win that game, you know, and I was like, okay, we can do so. We can make a run. And I, and I thought the kind of those two matches really like resonated with me. It's like, all right, yeah. we've got something special here kind of thing because, you know, Todd Olson, I mean, he does a great job at, at Lynchburg and, you know, he won a national championship. Probably, right. I think it was, eight or nine years ago now. So just knowing the history of that program and how that match went this year, I was like, all right, I think, I think we can do, we can make a run. Mm -hmm. So, you know, behind you, you have all the uh, awards from previous years, top 25s, you know, and you've had a, I think over the last four or five years, I think I looked back and you had a, Every year you had outstanding years in their own right, right? Yeah, like you might, yep. but you've always come shy of the final goal, which, you know, to your right. Um, yep. I, I mean, does it, is there a, and, and I get that you can't dwell on it, but does it feel like you finally got that? Like it's finally vindication for all the work that you've done? <laughs> like, oh. yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, this is, this was kind of the, the goal we had set in place for the program years ago. And, um, you know, in 2018, we made it to the final four. Um, so in, in this feel to this year, it was different than that year where, you know, we go to the 2018 final four. Uh, we were excited. Uh, however, we were kind of like the outsider where, you know, it was Wash U, Middlebury and Williams. They all have a rich history of, you know, winning it and being there and being on that uh, that scale a year in and year out where we were kind of the, just scratching at the surface, breaking mm-hmm. into it. So, you know, we ended up losing to Williams, who ended up winning it that year. And so then now the next couple of years, it's, okay, how do we get back? What, do we, what can we do? And then this year, leading into the Final Four, we, again – the team had um, just had that experience and just knew they were supposed to be there kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that came from the leadership from the upperclassmen. Um, And, you know, just playing Loris and then winning that game and then playing TCNJ, which is kind of fitting for how the season yeah. was going, right? You know, they had been number one in the country. and Undefeated, I yeah, think, going yeah. into that game. So it was, it was kind of fitting for what a final of the national championship yeah. could look like. Yeah. And, you know, we were just really happy with, you know, you know, 
winning everything. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, I definitely. I mean, like I said, as funny as it is, like there's a script somewhere written about this <laughs> because, you know, new coach. I mean, a retiring legend. And, yeah, there's um, a ton of storylines. Yeah. TCNJ, I mean, just just remarkable. But um, so let's let's um, let's talk about the final. <laughs> they they won three national championships. They've qualified for 30 straight NCAA tournaments. I mean, the NJAC must be boring after a while. They win it every year, right? Um, what what were your what you don't have a lot of time to prepare between games? I mean, it's just the still I won't say silly, but the nature of the NCAA where you right you don't yeah. you don't have all all that much time. Um, I mean, what were your initial thoughts about going going into this final against TC and J, and what I don't want to say intimidated, right? But did you did you almost feel like oh my gosh we're going up against the blue bloods in our in in the final? Um. It's going to maybe sound weird. Not really, in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, again, if you want to win everything, I'm a believer you got to play the best teams. And, you know, TCNJ was one of them this year. So, yeah. again, I love competition and I love playing the best teams. And so getting to play them was like something I wouldn't say look forward to, but just I think it was, again, fitting for what, maybe the championship should have looked like this year. And then, you know, all the storylines that Joe Russo, I mean, just a legend within the division yeah. three, like all then, three national championships, you name yeah. it, like, you know, so much respect for him and his program that, you know, he's established at TC and J. Um, but, you know, we approached it like we did any other game. Uh, me and the, me and our staff, you know, we've watched TC and J a number of times throughout the season broke film down on them it, it is you know the setup of the tournament is is tricky because you play back to back mm -hmm. so going into that weekend you know we prepared for lures however we watched wesley and we watched tc and j we <laughs> broke film down on them so it's yeah. almost like scouting for three teams but, game, yet, yeah. but you got to win the first one to get to the yeah. next kind of thing so you know it it does play a little bit of it makes it a little bit i guess more challenging in that sense where you play back to back but um we were prepared and you know we had a game plan for every team that we were faced against and fortunately you know we get past loris and then again um it was great to play tc and j yeah. and again got to beat the best to be the best and mm -hmm. you know they have laid the land for a number of years now and Again, it was just, it was great to play them. Uh, I, I think that the neatest thing about the game I watched, or that, that final, is the, it was such a contrast in how, in how two teams would play off against each other. And I think, again, credit to you, it, TC and J just didn't have answers to, to, to sort of what you were doing they did, on yeah. either side of the ball. I mean, they they did have their chances, right? As you as you said, you know, to be the best, you got to play the best, and they they did have their opportunities. But I, I, it just it I thought it, there was like a tactical masterclass there <laughs> between the two of you, right? Okay. Between both, right? Like it was it was that intense of a game that that uh, was was really really remarkable to me. So, um. Sarah Smith gets the first goal 18 minutes in. How important was that for for your players, for the team as a whole? I mean, always, always scoring an early goal in the first goal in a match is, just gives the confidence even more so to a team and to our game plan. And, you know, at that point, again, especially on that magnitude of a game and, and in soccer, I mean, in most games – our one goal games kind of thing so scoring that early is is i thought it was huge um then tc and j has to chase the game now where we you know can stick to our game plan and then we can adjust maybe later in the game to become more defensively sound if we needed to to do, just hold on with the one the goal game um so again and just gives the the team confidence so mm -hmm. you know the ball 
Bradley serves. Sarah makes a great run and a great finish in the back post. Again, just was it just set the tone. Yeah. And then from there, the game worked itself out. Mm-hmm. Um. So, what did you you go went into halftime uh, one one up? Uh, what what was your message to the to the team at that point? Yeah. So, thinking back on it, it the message was, you know, when we me and my staff we just watched the game again the other day it's like the final moment the final the final the final pass like in the yeah. first half just wasn't there like i thought we created opportunities more like half chances or just yep. like kind of that final either you shoot or maybe you slip yeah. a pass just wasn't connecting so again just harping on that at halftime to just continue to keep trying those things and then maybe just have a little bit more composure on the last mm-hmm. kind of right before maybe you're serving mm-hmm. it or shooting, whatever that may be. Uh, that was kind of a big point. Another one was the kind of interchange between Riley and Sarah, mm-hmm. which we had a breakaway off of that in the first, yeah. you know, 20, 25 seconds of the second half and yeah. don't score that one. So <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll just, Riley can laugh. We'll, about we'll that overlook one. that one. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Details. Uh, <laughs> and then another uh, on the offensive side of thing was kind of the matchup Emma Ritchie had and just kind of how their system was playing out uh, where their line was a little bit high. So uh, kind of if the midfielder or somebody had time and space to turn to just think a ball in behind and let Emma Ritchie run. Um, I thought that was something that I talked about at halftime and that we could really expose them with. And that's how we ended up getting the second goal. Molly uh, Beagle got a ball, turn up, and just pings it. Emma Ritchie, again, tons of pace. Does yeah. a great job. They're retreating back to their goal. Takes them out. We get a PK. Riley Bears the PK. Yeah. And then defensively, I thought we were great in the first half. Limited yeah. chances. Made them take really difficult shots from range. Um, and again... I was okay with that, knowing Haley back yeah. there. And, you know, if they did score a shot from 30 yards out, it's going to have to be something pretty special. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was willing to give that up. And so, again, defensively, I just continue to say, keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Keep making it hard. Keep blocking shots. Keep them as far away from goal. And, you know, I think TCMJ may have gotten a little frustrated with how they weren't creating a ton. Which then ultimately let them led them yeah. to shooting a little bit more from yeah. further out than yeah. made normal. I think I was I was really impressed by the defensive discipline, knowing what you have on the other side. But defensively, I mean, your shape and never getting pulled out of position. You were, I mean, kudos to them, especially in the second half. And to your point, I mean. TCNJ had speed, but they could never quite break that ball through, right? Right, right. And so every shot that they took was 30 yards away. And I was like, that's not going in. And like yeah. you said, if they score, you know, hats, hats off. off. Yeah, like, exactly. you're awesome. Exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly, exactly. And that's <laughs> what we were willing to take. And yeah. just a testament to our back line. I mean, three of those girls or players have never played a collegiate match as a defender yeah. uh you know sarah real our right back she was a converted forward mm-hmm. naya savage left back she was a sophomore but didn't have a COVID year and then Re- rihanna slater the right center back she was a true freshman so mm-hmm. the work they put in and oh. what they did in training again just couldn't be more proud of that group and then you add in the sixes that we had, Abby and Ellie, yeah. again, that, that block of like four and then two, yeah. this were great all season long. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, and then, and in that final, you, you, you weren't defending one-on-one, you were defending always six against however many they brought forward, which they never had the opportunity. It seemed to me to get their numbers forward because you were doing such damage or, you know, we Riley, just, I, just, just doing damage back. up yep. top. Yeah. Yep. And so yep. they could never, never sense, got the sense that they were comfortable going forward. So, right. yeah. It, yeah. Credit, credit to, to, to you and the team on that. Um, so let me just ask to, to 
you know, how's it been, you know, for you, for the team, rest of the staff, you know, to have won, did, you know, all the ticker tape parades and all that. And, the, you know, do you take vacation time <laughs> like, or are uh, you still celebrating? I mean, you might be. That's OK. <laughs> Uh, every, it's it's still coming, and uh, um, like the team's getting Newport News City Council is going to recognize us uh, nice. later this month. So that that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going to get a key to the city. I or? don't know. I don't know. I've never <laughs> never been a, never been a part of this, so it's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, the it team, happens in accounting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like well, the the day after we got back, the team there's we do a christmas like a lighting of our lawn ceremony and they got to be recognized there at that moment um then they're gonna actually i think another sporting event this spring they're gonna be recognized at Mm -hmm. so um it just keeps coming which is great and you know keep it going right yeah yeah just again i tell the girls is enjoy every moment of this and would realize we still have work to do we want (laughs) to win more but enjoy it because it, it is something very special and you know the work that they did this season again and you know this is why you do it yeah so uh yeah it's it's been great very cool very cool yeah enjoy it because like you never know when it's going to happen again right right for sure um um, all right so so let's shift over if it's okay to to recruiting and just some questions i have and 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 yeah so you know just overall, do you have a do you rec- do you recruit the player or do you recruit a position? Uh, and I guess I mean, right? Are you, are you just looking for talented soccer players that that have that something that you can be flexible with them so that, to your point, a converted converted forward to play defender? Um, yeah, I guess you can comment on that. Yeah, I mean, each year it's kind of the same makeup. Uh, like how we recruit like each year we're looking for a couple defenders a couple mids a couple forwards and a goalkeeper um, a lot of things I look at is how do you impact the game like almost individually like what what skill set do you bring to the table that can't be matched kind of thing and um, so yes as a player but also as a person you know you, you create these relationships corresponding through emails, phone calls, things like that, and, you know, meeting the team. Those those are really important to me. Uh, I don't want to just bring in, you know, great soccer players that maybe not be great people or <laughs> slash or whatever it may be kind of thing. Um, so there is, you know, like a screening process for that is, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but, again, pretty, pretty much the same makeup each year is, Couple defenders, mm-hmm. couple mates, and then you utility kind of rolls into that too. So, like yeah. you said, if you can play in multiple positions, I, I think that's really um, just doesn't like put you in just one spot where yeah. like maybe one year you come in and you're a defender and we have four senior defenders or whatever. Yeah. So it's going to be really hard. Maybe you can play midfield or something yeah. like that. So, yeah. yeah. So let me ask the 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 question I'm I'm always curious about because every every coach sort of answers it differently every I think it changes obviously generationally but you know when you when you recruit these players or you know you have a lot of exposure to high school kids they all especially now they all want to come to CNU to play um what what, what are what are some of the things that you think that they're lacking at that point before they make the jump to college? Because I think, I think one of the things in my conversations with players is I don't think they realize the, how big of a jump it is from playing high school, playing club to now competing at, you know, collegiate level. Yeah. I think it's just the physical demand of the season and how um you need to prepare your body for um because it's it is it is really compact you play you know 20 plus games in i don't know three months time span uh does take a toll on your body so if you're not fully ready to go 
um, it's going to be really hard for them to go through the season without picking up some sort of knock or some sort of injury then cuts them out of a portion of the season. So um, I think a lot of it is coming in as fit as you can be um, Mm -hmm. just because of the nature of our season. Um, And then the other factor, another point probably is just the balance of academics and, again, the demand of – you're training five days a week, playing once or twice a week kind of thing, having one off day. It is it is demanding, and especially for a fall sport, because mm-hmm. you're just thrown into everything at once. If you're yeah. a spring sport, it's a little different because you have the academic piece under your belt already, kind of, yeah. I would hope so by then. Um, but for a fall sport, it, you're like full go in everything. You have mm-hmm. academics, you have soccer, yeah. you have social life, you, you, you name yeah. it. It's like, boom. All in your face. Yeah. So yeah. here we go. So just being able to manage basically your time is something that's it's, that's really big too. Yeah. What what what's the best way to, for someone a player uh, to get your attention? Yeah, the initial starting point is an email, um, mm. like letting us know your grad year, where you play, what club team mm. you play for, uh, what showcase you're going to be at, and if it aligns like with us being there kind of thing, we'll come watch you, watch you play. And then from there, just having that open dialogue back and yep. forth, setting up phone calls, setting up visits, yep. uh, maybe coming to one of our ID camps kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the best way to initially start is through email. Yeah. Do you, uh, I mean, do you, I, I notice a lot of coaches now are placing a lot more emphasis on the ID camps. And I think it's, it makes sense to me just because I always say tournaments and where you go, there's no, there's no guarantee that you're going to, it's going to be anything worthwhile to watch. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, there's a balance to it. Um, mm-hmm. Fortunately for us being a state institution, I mean, 90% of our roster is Virginia players. Uh-huh. So we see them play in multiple settings yeah. pretty frequently. Uh, I will say probably 95% of our roster has been to one of our ID camps. Mm -hmm. So to me, coming to an ID camp, there's two parts to it. One, that shows that you're really interested in the school Mm -hmm. um, because you're coming down again to be coached Mm -hmm. from the coaching staff. Um, Then it gives you another opportunity to be in front of the staff. We incorporate our um, players to like help out and kind of organize Mm -hmm the camps so they're around um uh, so they get to know them kind of thing mm-hmm. um so i think it's very important it's not the end all be all but again mm-hmm. we can, can uh, the, we and i say staff is we can control that id camp so if there's a player we're looking at and it's a forward well we're going to set up a session maybe to really showcase yeah. if if that's what we yeah. want to see or maybe yeah. it's a couple midfielders let's do something different kind of thing mm-hmm. Um, or we pair them against somebody that we know is a good player or whatever it may be. Um, So, yeah, it's a balance. Uh, Again, we encourage it, but, again, if Mm -hmm. you can't make it work, it's not going to end all the all kind of thing. Okay, so I (laughs) am – in our first iteration of this interview, you sent me some links, and I'll I'll put those in the description and – um if anybody has any questions i'm sure they could they can like you said you could they can email you they email me if they want to and i'll just forward it along (laughs) sounds good um um yeah so again i just want to want to really grateful really appreciative that you took the time and uh you know credit to to you your team and congratulations and i hope you ticker tape parades for you know for the next eight months because at some point you got to defend it so for sure (laughs) um so all right all right so thanks again coach do appreciate yep thank you